I made my first million in 2020 at 26 years old, three years after launching my business. And today I wanna to share that story with you guys and highlight some of the biggest takeaways that I've gotten from that experience of earning that first million and hopefully pave some of the foundations for your future success. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jordan Platten. I own Affluent.co, which is a multi-platform digital marketing agency based here in the UK. And we're responsible for generating millions of new revenue for companies all over the globe every single month. Now the agency profits seven figures on a yearly basis and across our portfolio, we bring in multiple seven figures a year. So I think it makes sense to start from the beginning and then work ourselves through in chronological order. Because I had a very modest upbringing. I was well, certainly not from a rich family, but not a poor one either. I had everything that I needed, but not everything that I wanted. And my family taught me from a very young age that if you want something, you have to go out there and work for it yourself and get it yourself. And so from very young, I wanted to earn my own money and at any opportunity, I would try and do that. I remember in school, I used to collect Pokemon cards like many youngsters did in my generation. And I was very creative, I liked drawing. So I would literally get go home and I would draw Pokemon cards on A4 piece of paper and I would go into school the next day and I would sell them to people. And sometimes I would do commissions. People would be like, oh, can you draw me this card? And I'd go up and I'd draw it. It'd be like a pound per drawing. But that's what I did, just lots of creative things and I would sell those things for those negligible amounts of money in school. I wasn't the, the, the sweet selling guy. But that taught me from very young to aspire to have your own money and to desire for your own financial security and not have to depend on anyone else for that. I didn't really have pocket money and I was always envious of my friends that did, but it made me want to work hard for having it myself. And so when I actually could get a job, I got a job straight away. I worked uh, doing a paper round and where you deliver papers in your local area. I lived in a small rural village and I would literally work for about two hours every morning. I had to wake up at 5 a.m. and I'd deliver papers and for 15 pounds a week, which was absolutely nothing, but I loved it at the time. <laughs> None of my friends were working and it was one of the first jobs that people had. And then that transpired into like this string of jobs in pubs, in restaurants, in the hospitality industry. I was a pot wash, I made sandwiches, I worked on fryers in, in a pub. Um, I then moved into retail and I worked in a couple of clothing stores. I worked for JD Sports, got sacked from that job. Actually, I had 13 jobs before the age of 21 years old, three of which I got sacked from. <laughs> you could say I was, and I am probably still, a bit of an employee's nightmare because I always struggled with authority. And in school, I was the kid that when you're in parents' evening, the teachers would say, oh, if Jordan just paid more attention, if Jordan just gave it his all, if Jordan just worked a little bit harder, then he has so much potential and he could do so much better. But I never did, right? I didn't want to be sat and taught about a subject I fundamentally didn't care about. There's something that didn't excite me. Be told this is black and white and had my creativity constricted. I always moved towards creative subjects like drama, like arts, like technology. I wanted something that enabled my brain to be used to what I believed was its full potential. And I was a very introverted kid. I was not a, a loud person in school at all. I kind of kept myself to myself. And I always wanted to be extroverted in creativity and in art and so on. And so I had, remember having a conversation with my dad when I said to him, Dad, I really want to be successful. I really want to have a lot of money. And he said to me, Jordan, look, I know you're creative. I think you should study architecture in university because architects get paid an awful lot of money. And at this time, like throughout my whole life, I was convinced that you have to go to school, you have to go to university, you have to get a good degree if you want to be successful, work up the career ladder. And that's the mentality that I was brainwashed into thinking was correct. And I can't blame anyone around me for that because everybody else was brainwashed by that same societal thinking that we need to put in the work now, go to university, work up a career ladder, and then we'll be successful later on in life. And looking back now, that's just simply flawed and that's not how it has to be. But I went to university, studied architecture. Within my first six months, I realized that it was gonna to have to take me six years to be fully qualified. And even then I might just be lucky at earning 30,000 pounds a year which I was not okay with. So I lost love with the subject very quickly and I was going out a lot and partying and I was very social in uni. Again, because of this desire to be an extrovert, I was still quite introverted at this time. So I'd force myself into uncomfortable positions, go out a lot. 
And I then got a job as a PR guy. And so I would sell nightclub tickets on the street and rope people into clubs. And after about a year of doing that, I found I was actually quite good at it. And I built a relationship with the guys who owned the club. And I got a club owner to give me a shot at actually running my own evening and actually hiring my own PR people. And instead of me doing the PR, I would actually run the event and I would take all the money off the door and the bar would take all of the money off the club. And I ended up getting three more contracts for that. So I was doing four nights a week in the local city whilst at university. But it was a very toxic environment. For those of you that have ever been in that nightclub scene, you'll know that you've got this bottle culture where people spend all of their money every single week on one bottle of Grey Goose and it makes them feel like they're really important and everybody else treats them like they're super rich and that like they're just a special person. And it builds this ego and this pretense and this materialism, which I think is incredibly unhealthy in a young adult. And for me, I was consumed by this world and I was so sucked into this vortex of image. And I actually ended up getting kicked out of university because I stopped attending my lectures because I was up late so night, up late so many times a week working on this business. Two months after being kicked out of university, that business fell to and everything stopped going working and it was January and everybody was in New Year's spirit and no one had any money and it just didn't work out. And I was still trying to be this person. I'd just been kicked out of university, so I'd even more had a point to prove to everybody that I was somebody and that I was successful. And I ended up getting myself in thousands upon thousands of pounds worth of debt. I got, I think it was like six or seven K at its peak, which for me was just so suffocating. And because I was living in this pretentious world, I didn't have the heart to tell the people around me. I couldn't even speak to my own mother about it because I was that embarrassed and I was still pretending to be successful to her. And so I got really Really depressed for a couple of months and I knew that I had to get myself out of that situation but I didn't know how and so I thought to myself okay what's the quickest way for me to make money because at this time I was still very financially driven I thought money was the secret to all happiness and so I thought okay fine I'm gonna go into sales now that terrified me because yes I was confident enough to PR people on the street but they're drunk people it isn't one thing doing that there's another thing actually selling to business people and professional people on a daily basis. But I managed to get myself a sales job. I blagged my way in and it was in a cold calling center making a hundred cold calls a day. And I remember my first day after training, walking to the end of the office with my script in my hand and I would tremble in fear. I was so scared to speak on the phones, but I knew that the only way I'd be able to get myself out of the situation I was in is if I just got good at sales. If I forced myself against this wall in this uncomfortable position and I was able to sell. And yes, for weeks I was terrible and I was learning and I was, I was not good, but I remembered something that I'd been taught in drama in school. And it's that the principles of how you learn a script and how you memorize a script and how important it is to memorize your script as quickly as possible, because then you can put your own tonality on it and you can put your own spin on it and then you can relax and use your body language. And I noticed that everybody in the office was stuck just reading off their script, even people that have been there for years. So one evening I went home and I just, with repetition from reading the script in my mind, sentence by sentence, I learned the script off by heart. And then within three months of being in the company, I was in the top three performers internationally. Uh, I was bringing in the most sales. On my third month with that company, I think I made 6,000 pounds in commission. It was like 8,000 including salary, which was more money than I had ever seen in one singular paycheck. It was insane. And I think it was it was close to company record of what had been paid in commissions that month. And I remember staying in the office late just so I could be smashing the phones and selling. And so I then had money. I was earning more money than the, my friends. I was earning, I think it worked out around 40,000 a year in that first sales job at my peak. And then I jumped into another sales job because I wanted to move up the career ladder. Now I was earning 50,000 pounds, which is a really, really respectable amount of money to be making at 22 years old. But I wasn't fulfilled because all of a sudden I felt like I had the money, but I didn't have the freedom. I didn't have time to enjoy this money. I was still going on one holiday a year because that's all I was allowed to do. And that made me miserable. And that made me think, do you know what? There's so much more to life than this, than to be stuck in an office, just trying to blindly chase money for the rest of your life. And I remember sitting in the office and on my third sales job, and looking around me one day and seeing all of these people who were like twice the age of me, just kind of all looking quite glum and miserable, doing the same thing every single day. And I said to myself, Jordan, you are not gonna allow yourself to be in that position. You are not gonna become this person. And that day, I started looking at alternatives. I started looking at way out. I started looking for a business that I could start working for myself. And I got lost in the maze 
that is online entrepreneurship and online business truly is a maze. I found Amazon FBA, I looked at drop shipping, I looked at trading and Forex, but nothing really resonated with me and my skill set. I wanted something that was sales based so I could use my existing skill set that I had learned. And I stumbled across social media marketing, or at the time it was called SMMA. And this is simply the act of me approaching someone else, a business owner, and offering them a service that would help them to increase their revenue on a monthly basis. In return, Turn, in theory, that business owner would pay me thousands of pounds on a monthly basis. And to me, I mean, it, it, it seemed too good to be true when I first heard about it. But I committed to it because I knew, again, in my life, I was backed into a corner like I was when I was in debt and I wanted to get myself out of it. And so I watched YouTube videos, I read books, I bought courses. I started waking up at 5 a.m. every morning again, back, taking it back from when I used to do a paper round, and I would study social media marketing religiously. Now, within two weeks of studying social media marketing, Marketing, I managed to sign up my first ever client and it was a restaurant in my local city. I actually went face to face into this restaurant. I told them I'd like to have a meeting with them. It really didn't go well, but I somehow managed to get it through the skin of my teeth. I then managed to sign up a furniture store and a bathroom showroom and also a jewelry company. And within a month, I'd quit my job. It was actually, I'm pretty sure it was about two and a half weeks after committing to starting the agency, I quit my job and I replaced my outgoings. And what was important to me is that I wanted to just replace my outgoings and then quit. I didn't want to replace my entire lifestyle. And I would recommend all of you guys doing the same, by the way, if you're starting an online business or any business for that matter, do not quit your job until you replace your outgoings. You want to have that security there. And to be honest, the rest is history. I started my agency. I was working for myself. I was motivated by what I had learned in sales and in my career that if you don't stick to your targets, you're going to fail. And so for me as an agency owner, when I was reaching out to companies in my local area, when I was calling up businesses every single day, I always had my old boss, Craig, in the back of my mind saying, Jordan, if you don't stick to your targets today, you're gonna to get the sack. And I was gifted to be able to have that resilience and that consistency ingrained within me from those sales jobs that I'd worked in previously. And that made it a lot easier for me. Within three months of launching the agency, I was making about 10,000 pounds a month, which was more money than I'd ever earned in my life on a monthly basis. That felt absolutely incredible. And I just remember being completely invigorated and my drive was through the roof. Working for myself, I finally knew that I was living my purpose and I was doing the right thing. And I just continued to build that business scale. I documented my journey on this YouTube channel. You can literally go back and watch. I think I only have like four clients in the first video I put up on this YouTube channel. I documented that whole journey. I actually started teaching people how to replicate the agency's success as well. Launched a secondary business. And within three years, I made my first million. And that was a monumental milestone for me because I remember as a kid, I would think to myself, if I could ever make a million, I'd be so happy and my life purpose would be fulfilled. I never believed that I would make a million as quickly as I did. And I think I'd always convinced myself that you have to invent the next Uber, you have to invent the next Airbnb, you have to have a unicorn business in order to make millions of pounds or millions of dollars. But that is not true in any way, shape or form. You can replicate a business that has already been out there for tens of years. A marketing agency is a business model. There's so many marketing agencies out there. It's been around for tens and tens of years since the birth of the internet, even before the internet, right? And you could still start one and be successful. And that was just mind blowing to me. But I'd be lying if I said that making a million was as fulfilling as I wanted it to be and lived up to the dreams that I had around it. Because it wasn't to be honest. I think making that first million was glamorized in my mind and glamorized by the media and everybody else so much that when I made it, it was actually quite disappointing because I realized that money wasn't my purpose, that money wasn't the route to all happiness. And I've actually realized that before the million, I realized that when I made my first 20K a month or 10K a month, but it was instilled even more when I reached that financial milestone. And for me, at that moment, I really had to take a lot of time to understand what I really wanted out of my life and what I was truly working towards and what my real why was. Because being financially secure isn't really that difficult, and I'll be careful what I say because we're all in different situations. I do not believe that becoming financially secure is a difficult thing to achieve if you are determined enough to be consistent and resilient through sticking to one thing for long enough. I really do not believe that it is. And when you, once you reap financial security, 
you need something else to drive you forward. You need a greater purpose. You need something that's bigger than you are and bigger than money. And for me, that is lifelong freedom. That is creating a life for the other people around me that they couldn't have created for themselves. And that is also through starting a life of philanthropy. And what I work towards now is starting a philanthropy company and I want to got a whole greater purpose. I've actually got a video on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description where I talk about my future goals. But it was really important for me to understand that money was no longer the route to my happiness and my driver for success. And that actually has enabled me to scale my business quicker than I've ever scaled. From year three to year four and a half, we've pretty much doubled where we were previously, probably more than that. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if finances were still my motivator. My motivator shifted onto helping other people and to focusing on the product and the end result for our customers and our clients. And in doing that, we've scaled up exponentially. So I suppose that's pretty much it. That's the story. And if you drop a comment down below, guys, obviously this is a casual video today because I'm currently driving to see my business partner, Joe, and every quarter we have a meeting where we go through the strategy of the business. We go through a breakdown of, okay, where are we at? What are our goals? Do we need to realign? Uh, and that's a meeting that I'm going through to right now. And it just felt fitting to record this video because today is a day where I'm going to be revisiting my goals and revisiting that. So I just want to finish this by saying like one last thing. Um, and that is for any of you guys that have watched this and you're like, okay, cool, this, is, this has been motivating. This makes it feel more realistic to me. My biggest advice and one of the biggest things that I've learned throughout life from this journey of making that first million in 2020 is number one, money does not buy happiness. And if money alone is your, is your driver, then you're not gonna be happy in your life, okay? There are people who work in McDonald's that will be happier than you are because they're not motivated by money. So you can't have your motivator as money. Number two, it is that resilience is probably the single most important trait in business. Resilience, and that resilience is purely the act of being able to be told no relentlessly again and again and again and you are going to stick to your guns and you're going to say no I'm going to do this and I'm going to be successful because I had pushback so many times throughout my life I had failed business after failed business the nightclub events business I even started a clothing brand when I was in college failed right but it's having that resilience to pick yourself back up and always continue no matter what because you know in your heart that you are destined to be successful, that you are destined to be a somebody. It's then resilience, it's consistency as well. So many people think they wanna make a million. So many people think they wanna start a business, but they jump, they bunny hop from business model to business model, and they never actually are successful because they're just testing out the water in so many different things, and they're never consistent enough at one thing over a period of time to actually then be successful and get the fruits of that. So pick one thing, one model, and stick to it for enough time for you to be successful. And that's all you need is resilience, consistency, and for mo money not to be your number one motivator. Sure, enjoy the fruits. I'm sitting in a supercar. I've got a million dollar house. Money's great. <laughs> I like materialism. And I don't think you should ever be ashamed of that. But it's not what's gonna make you feel happy in here. It's very external. Now, final something actionable for you guys. I created a video very recently on the best online businesses to start during a recession, which I think is very relevant right now. I want you to watch that video and make a judgment as to what would be the best step to you, what business you gravitate to the most, what works for you and your personality type and your skill set. Watch that video, there's a link in the description after this one. Stick to something, commit to it, be resilient, consistent, and send me a message when you make that first. Sweet guys, I'll chat to you in a bit. Have a good one. Cheers.